Hey, welcome everybody to Every Friday with Dan and Olivia. I'm Olivia Darbo. I'm Dan Miles. And I want to talk about a subject that I think is kind of apropos, especially right now in 2015 societally. Um, what one does when you are born in a world that you don't fit in. What do you have to say about that, Dan? A world that I don't fit in. Yeah, do by conventional to... standards. So let's, let's say you're born, and I, I think both. I think what's interesting about this subject matter for me is I feel like everybody can identify with that. Whether people see themselves as fitting into the world or not, you know, everybody else sees us as something else than we see ourselves I, as. I get your point. Yeah. So that seems situational to me. Like different situations where I feel like I fit in and where I don't. For example, like, let's just say, you know, it's, it's, it's been talked about, um, you know, till the cows come home, especially in 2015 with, with um, Bruce Jenner becoming... Um, mm-hmm. Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner. So, it, 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 you know, just as, a, just as an example, like, he decided to really step out and, and realize that he had lived the majority of his life, let's say halfway through his life, had children, been married several times, and he wasn't really living in his truth. And mm-hmm. so he made a, you know, executive decision and a very personal decision to step out and really, you know, say, look, you know, this is, this is actually not who I am. This is who I am. And, you know, I don't, I don't, act, I never actually really felt that I fitted into this world as Bruce. I fit more into this world as Caitlin. So it's really a question of, you know, sometimes people get the support that they need to make those kind of decisions and sometimes they don't. So nine times out of 10, I think people are sort of left not necessarily getting the support. And so they have to support themselves and kind of, come up with, you know, an optimistic outlook as to how they can then translate who they are. Timing is important with something like that. I think of George Decay, who, you know, came out as homosexual, as gay in his 60s or something. I guess among those circles and among his friends, it was common knowledge. But like Bruce Jenner, he was a public person. You know, it's a little different if you're a private person doing these things. So... So, yeah, I guess I would think of that in one regard of a, a world you don't fit in. But, you know, I moved around a lot as a kid, and uh, I was in a military family. And when I was with other military families, it wasn't a big deal. But there was one time when we lived in New York, and it was determined that the uh, public schools weren't safe. They were too dangerous. So I was into a parochial school where everybody was Catholic, and I wasn't. Yeah. And everybody wore a uniform. And I was 13 years old. I'd never worn a uniform to school. And I didn't have the New York accent that they did. And, you know, I'm still friends with some of them. They're good kids. They were nice to me and everything. But I was definitely conscious of being the fish out of water. Also, (laughs) my mother cut my hair at the time, and she didn't cut it very well. So I was known for having this Dutch boy haircut. That's so so funny. It was just a combination of things that made me very self-conscious that I didn't fit in that regard. And that's a difficult age anyways, eighth graders and stuff. Um, so I was an oddball when I first got there, but by the end of the school year, you know, I was part of the group, you know, part of it was cause I'm, I wanted to be, I wasn't, you know, standoffish. I didn't act superior or inferior. I was just like, I think it was kind of a curiosity to them, you know, cause these kids had grown up in the parochial school with the nuns and going to mass and wearing the uniforms. And here comes a dude willing to get in trouble for wearing Pumas to school, even though you're not supposed to, <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, I got in trouble all the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like more so now than ever, it's a time um, that if, you, if you're born and you feel like you don't fit in, maybe it's because you were born to to help create a new world that you fit into. It's, I, it, it, I feel like more so, that's what's exciting to me about this younger generation mm-hmm. is that I feel like there actually is a lot of support in that regard for people to completely stand in their truth. Completely. I would agree that there is a more inclusive climate out there, probably the most inclusive climate I've ever seen. And I think a big contributing factor to that is the internet. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of friends who live in all kinds of places. I have Australian friends, European friends, people from all over the place that we can communicate with instantly. And you see what you have in common is much more you get you don't have to like filter your experience of another culture, another group of people through media or through something else. You know that that guy likes Steely Dan, which we listened to on an earlier show, because you're in the same Facebook group and he's telling you he likes it. So Exactly. Yeah, I think you're right. It, we're in the past if you kind of stood up and uh, behaved a certain way. You know, if you think about the 1950s and, and uh, you know, the, after World War II, 
before the 60s, there was a very sort of a rigid, uh, you, you couldn't have, the Beatles broke the long hair thing. You, you can have any kind of hair now. Absolutely. You, you can go to a fancy upscale restaurant and the dude can come out with a rainbow punk rock mohawk and piercings and a crazy beard and you just tell him what kind of salad you want. You don't even, <laughs> you don't even blink, you know. Back in the day, this, I mean, uh, David Bowie got death threats when he yeah. was going through Texas and boy George, never mind. So. Yeah. But I think it's trending towards, you know, if you if you speak for gay marriage, you get applause. If you speak against it, you get, you know, boos and muttering. And it used to be the exact opposite, probably. Right. Um, and in George Takei, not only did he, like, come out into a different public perception, but he just ran with it. He embraced it. He, like, this is my, my partner, my husband. Deal with it. I, I have a rainbow logo. He's like, you know relished in it I felt. and that's what's sort of ironic I think about society and especially what I love about this country is if you embrace who you are I mean that's really to me what this country represents is you know you think about all of the immigrants that have come over since the early 1900s you know coming in on the Mayflower even you know back back way back when the more that you get behind who you are and and be who you are I think that ultimately you know it's like if you believe it others will believe it and uh so, I mean, I just look at this subject matter. I'm excited about this subject matter. I think it's a really positive way that we're moving societally. Uh, but definitely, we haven't regressed in this regard. I feel like we are, are evolving, whereas in there's other, other aspects and other topics, I feel like, oh, right. it's so archaic that people have those kind of views. But, but um, this is actually something I feel really happy yeah. about. Well, a couple episodes, you were talking about people changing their lives and improving their lives. United States of America represented exactly that to people in other, around the world. You know, their way of changing their life was getting on a boat or a plane or whatever yeah. they could and coming air. Exactly. <laughs> so that definitely ties together. The nice thing about the internet, too, is you know, although the Russians and the Chinese or the North Koreans may try, it's not really controlled by any central authority. So my feeling is if, if there is some kind of atrocity going on somewhere in the world, technology exists where the common man, to use coin a phrase, or woman, but you know what I mean, can get the word out. You can't have a harvest of despair, a Stalin kind of thing, and you put it under the rug. So it empowers the citizens of the world. The flip side of that is you have all kinds of predators and rip-off artists and Nigerian princes and everything <laughs> using the same access to screw with people identity theft and whatnot but overall i think it's a benefit more so than a disadvantage and you mentioned the younger generation i mean you know i can't remember i've been on so many shows these days i can't remember when this was discussed but i guess it was when i was speaking with leo sidron on my show i was talking about how i'd be sitting at home playing scott joplin on the piano and i get in the car and go to a gig where i was playing dio mm -hmm. you know and now these days to kids, they don't under, understand really that separation is a thing anymore. Yeah. They're just as happy to listen to a banjo player, maybe hear an opera sample, a little hip hop. It's almost like there's so much stimuli that everything is sort of blending into one composite thing. Yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, almost as if you and I would change our hairstyles and our clothes before we even stood up and left the room. It's like this constant change and everything. It can be overwhelming, but it can also give you the sense of the possibility. I think it's very empowering when websites like Amazon.com gave the consumer the ability to review products. You know, you can say, 35 people can say, this product is awesome. And two people can say no. Or 50 people can say, this sucks, don't buy it. And this is something they're trying to sell. Right. In the past, you'd get a Led Zeppelin album, you'd put it on, and it was what it was. Now, people get it, screw around with it, change it around, and they're involved in the creative process. And you'll find a lot of your friends are really funny, or they're good writers, or they're really smart, and they didn't have an outlet for it before. And, you know, the group of Facebook friends I've whittled mine down to, which is, you know, two or three hundred people I actually really want to know and deal with, um, they all have that ability to, to amuse me or educate me. And you're not always turning to, which is ironic because you're kind of a celebrity yourself, but you're not turning to figurehead so much anymore. No. I'll turn around and ask a friend what they think. Yeah. And, and it can be a friend in, in freaking Brazil. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think one thing that we do, that we do need to continue to, to have in our lives, especially, you know, for the younger generation, our heroes, you know, um, it just 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 and, and that person can be your neighbor you know what i'm saying it doesn't have to be the president it doesn't have to be your favorite rock star it just has to be somebody who you know um 
is defined in who they are and um, they have the courage to be themselves. I mean, even something that simple. Well, I'm sure that Caitlyn Jenner and George Takei are heroes to people in a similar boat. You know, they can see the example that's been set and do it themselves on their own little local scale and have something to point to as somebody else who did it successfully. So it helps in that regard too, I believe. Mm. Okay, well... I'm we for time. We, there, damn. Well, we certainly have time to hear your song. I'm dying to know yeah. what song you play. Do you, uh, do you have any, any other Bruce Jenner type individuals? I'm trying to think if there's a, like, a correlation to my song. Because it's oh. in the, uh, Can I give it away? Yeah, this, now's the time. Give it away, Tom. Well, I mean... Wait a second. Give it away, give it away, give, give it, away it away now. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. It's a Nick Drake song called Poor Boy. And uh, I'm sure that through quantum physics, it will have some kind of correlation to what we've been talking about. We will entrust the audience to make their own connection. That yeah. Possibly. Now, it's all I, subjective. I've heard him. I haven't heard this particular song as opposed to, you know, Deacon Blue. So... Yeah, let's listen to it, and as we listen to it, let's see if we can... Let's see if we can find some connective tissue. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let us sing for my supper I never held my neighbor Never do what is proper For my fair share of labor I'm a poor boy And I'm a rover Count your coins and throw them over my shoulder I may grow older Nobody knows Nobody sees how shaking my knees. Nobody cares how steep my stairs. And nobody smiles if you cross their stairs.
seas I'll shake me my knees Nobody cares I'll steep my stairs And nobody smiles If I cross the stairs Speaking as a guy who's never heard that song before, my, my immediate reaction is I really like the instrumentation on it. <laughs> and, you know, well, there's lots of it. Yeah, I like the vibe of it. A lot of a lot of hitting the word never. You know, I heard the word neighbor in there. Yeah. And you know, you're talking about outsiders who don't fit in. Well, the song title "Poor Boy" evokes sympathy, and I heard the line in there, "So sorry for his self." So yeah, yeah, I would say it sounds like somebody who feels like they don't. We fit talk in. about heroes, even if it is your neighbor. So literally, we just said like a minute before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you can have a hero. It doesn't matter if your neighbor it's fits your neighbor, or mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be a celebrity or your favorite rock star. Then here comes just Nick somebody Drake. who, yeah, talking exactly. neighbor, yeah, <laughs> who was a manic depressive, took right. his life, 1969. Wow, happens to the best of us. Hopefully not to all of us, though. No, but he certainly came in, made a statement, boom, went out like that. Yeah, well, there's... and and then subsequently became mm -hmm. like this amazing. I mean, he had a whole incredible. Made his fame status after mm -hmm. he's one it sort of exemplifies yet again another person who who rebirth. had to yeah rebirth after death i live in phoenix that's what the word phoenix represents rising from the ashes born again <laughs> <laughs> that quite doesn't represent that well okay well cool well great choice of song great choice of topic thank you, thank i enjoyed you. that bye 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 <laughs>